welcome back, Millowatts. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Rickenbacker 4003 bass guitar. This Rickenbacker 4003 was built in 2008 in the Rickenbacker Guitar Factory in the United States of America. This bass guitar features two single coil pickups. There's one in the neck position, one in the bridge position, and then in the middle selector you can have them both on. A cool feature about this bass is that it features a push-pull pot on the bridge pickup. Now what that allows you to do is to choose from two capacitors. You've got one that's the 1960s and 70s kind of vintage tone and you can get that by pulling it up. And then by slapping it down you get that 1980s to, to uh, today modern tone. The Rickenbacker 4003 has a set neck construction. You can see on other basses, such as the Fender P bass and the Mustang bass, is they have a bolt-on neck. And by having a through-body set neck guitar, it really adds way more sustain, which uh, is great for bass. The bass features a maple neck, a maple body, and a rosewood fretboard. And the very unique thing that Rickenbacker does to their guitars, compared to other guitar companies, is that they put a clear coat onto the guitar neck. Now what that does is it allows you to glide a lot smoother around the fretboard. These Rickenbackers have a very high value build quality. It's got a bound top of the body as well as a bound neck. I really love the, the uh, officialness of the... The only thing I've done to change this bass was I put Rotosound flat wound strings on it. And when I first had the bass, when I first purchased it, it came with round wound strings. Now, round wound strings have a bit more of an aggressive growl to them. When the flat wounds are a little bit more um, mellow. And I was really wanting that early, you know, Pink Floyd, Beatles tone. And I, I really, I just wasn't able to get it with the round wounds. So as soon as I got these flat wounds, it, it really picked up that vintage character. Another little feature on this bass is that it features a Rico sound jack, which allows you to play in stereo out of the bass, or the standard jack. And right now we're going into the standard jack. And that brings us to the signal chain for today's video. We're going from the Rickenbacker bass with the flat wound strings, going out the mono channel into a full tone OCD pedal to get a little bit of break up and act like a preamp before hitting the interface. And then we're going into the interface, which is a Focusrite Scarlett 4-track. Um, and then we're going into Ableton. And there's no effects on the Ableton on the bass tracks. Before buying this bass, I actually looked at all the basses on the market. I looked at the Hoffner basses, uh, the Fender basses, like the Mustang and the Jazz bass and the P bass, and even looked at putting a jazz neck on a P-bass body and looked at all the different options, uh, the Gibson EB basses, like the hollow body ones and the, the SG bass and the Thunderbird. And I really looked at all the basses on the market and I wanted one thing that could kind of do it all from, you know, like heavy rock to like soft kind of beetle tones. And I was really, really leaning towards getting a Hofner, but I figured I, I didn't know if it was gonna rock you know, like, be very solid rock guitar. And I think I, I chose the right thing of the Rickenbacker because this thing just has a, a certain, I don't know, it kind of feels like a piano at times, being able to just write really easily and have a full scale. I thought this was really good for just making any kind of music, and uh, yeah, I, I've really loved it. I've only ever put one set of strings on it, and I've had it for about uh, two or three years now. And uh, it's just 
time and time again. This is my go-to base for everything. So thank you, Rickenbacker. This is uh, the best base on the market, in my opinion, and I suggest everyone go pick one up tonight. So now I'm going to show you a couple different tricks of how you can get different tones out of this bass uh, to explain how it's a bit more versatile. So if you were going for something more hard rock, and mind you, I've got, the, um, I've got all the controls dimed on this, okay? I'm on the bridge pickup, and uh, everything's full up at 10. Treble, max treble, max volume on all of these. And I'm, getting, I'm setting my gain from the full tone OCD pedal going into the interface, and I'm just making sure that the interface isn't peaking. But I want the most out of the bass. So if you want more of that open uh, motorhead type heavy rock tone, I suggest going to the, the uh, push-pull down setting and just kind of hitting hard on the bass and uh, not palm muting, not doing any muting like that. So if you want to go for that, you know, 60s, 70s, uh, Beatles, Pink Floyd type of tone, I would suggest uh, popping it into the, uh, the uh, up position on the push-pull. And that's going to give you the capacitor setup the, the way that Rickenbacker used to set up the basses in 60s and 70s. I would also suggest palm muting, where you ride your palm on the edge of the strings to kill the notes. going to try some slap bass. Now I don't normally play slap bass, but just to kind of give you a, uh, a little bit of an idea of what it would sound like, we're going to go to the 80s setting, because when I think of slap bass, I think of someone like Flea. Now, don't judge me too hard on my slap bass, because I never play slap bass, so we'll just give it, give it a go, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to run through the neck pickup and we're just going to do the neck pickup and we're going to roll through the tone. So we got it as bassy as it goes and then we'll get to the trebly, the trebliest. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the middle. Now, the middle has got the, uh, the tone switched down, so it's going to be in that 80s modern setting on the bridge pickup. And I've got it bassy as it goes. Add in a little treble. adding the treble on both as we go. Alright, let's 
let's do that same experiment, but let's pop it up into the 60s, 70s cap. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hear the bridge pick up and we're going to run that through its tone controls and we're going to start with the uh, 80s cap down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop it up to the uh, the 60s and 70s tone and hear how that sounds. So that concludes the review on the Rickenbacker 4003 bass. I really suggest uh, everybody go check this out. This is really the coolest bass I've ever played. I've got more than six or seven guitars, but I've only got one bass guitar. So haven't needed to buy another one, but just want to let everyone know how cool this is. Thank you, Rickenbacker. Keep rocking. Miller Watts. Like and subscribe! <laughs>